Welcome to this edition of Get to Know Your Wayne State Football Program. This is the season preview with head coach Tyrone Wheatley. Coach Wheatley, you saw the job come, come open back last November, December. What got you interested in coming to Wayne State and being the head coach? Home. <laughs> you know, interest was home. Not only that, um, just the history of Wayne State and uh, being a very close part of it. Um, my high school track coach, Lake Jones, mm -hmm. played football here in the um, late 60s and early 70s. And he spoke about the school, you know, at nauseum. And then, you know, just through the years of just hearing about Wayne State and when they made the run in 2011, uh, it was incredible. And that's when Tiffin had uh, the big running back that played, I think it was Chris Ivory. So mm -hmm. just knowing about the GLIAC and just understanding um, what this conference is and then what the school has to offer. Uh, this was a place that I said, you know, if that job ever came available, I would love to take it. Yeah, I know Lee Jones was at your press conference that we mm -hmm. had back at the Fieldhouse. I know that meant a lot to you having him there. Oh, it meant a lot. I mean, you know, um, sports, you know, like they say, is always the great indicator of life, right? Mm -hmm. But to also have him as a mentor, as a track coach and just mentor in life in general, but then to have him there to see my life come full circle, mm -hmm. you know, from player to now coach right. and to have my coach there was uh, it was instrumental. It was really incredible. And speaking of coaches, your coach from Michigan, Coach Jackson. Coach Jackson, right? yes. Um, those, like I say, I keep those guys near and dear to my heart because, um, you know, sports. You're going to go through your ups and downs, and sometimes those downs you really get down. And um, both on the field and off the field, and they were there to help me through so many aspects of my life. And um, I still speak to them too. Like I say, they're my mentors, and, and now we've grown into friends. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's just. One of those deals where I'm, I'm now entering into stages of my life I've never been, and I really look up to these men, and I always just say, okay, what's around this corner? Uh -huh. And it's always good to have, be able to pick up the phone and to phone one of them, or both of them, yeah. right? And, and have great uh, conversation and advice. And um, like I say, it's, they're almost like my crystal ball. <laughs> you know, I always I have, I have cheat codes in life, which is really great. and. Um, and they've been there for me now, like I said, just not only on the field, but as, as men in my life away from football. Uh, so it was great to have those two there for me. I'm just so happy they were in my life because I drove them crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds great. Obviously, you had to hit the ground running coming in the end of January, getting a staff put together. Mm -hmm. You've got some guys that, in talking to some of the assistant coaches, in finding out, I guess, the coaching tree connections, you know, whether it was um, Glenn and... Tom at Youngstown State, or a number of them, I think four of them were at Savannah State at one point and stuff. The uh, continuity there, especially with the offensive coaches, that should be exciting for the Warrior fans this it, year. It is exciting, but it's also very important. Mm -hmm. um, I've been on staffs where, you know, coaches individually were very bright, mm -hmm. you know, very smart coaches, um, very intuitive. But now all of a sudden you bring them in and, and you know, you're from different systems and you're from different places, the chemistry isn't always there, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's the old cliche says, you know, <laughs> oil and water. I don't want oil and water. I want chemistry. I want all the elements and the, you know, elements and the bonds to just stick together and, and so we can form something, right? Not repel or fight against. And it was, a, it was really important for me, you know, going through my years of coaching and saying, okay, why we really didn't gel as a staff or why this offense didn't really gel or the defense or the whole team is because they're, like I said, continuity wasn't there. So uh, it all started with Russell Damasi, a um, young, bright mind. Uh, I liked the offense that he ran. And speaking with the Army head coach um, on several occasions, Monkins, uh, we played them, and he and I built a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I really like this offense. And so, just start speaking with him, and he led me to Russ. Oh, that's great. Um, spring ball, what did you see from the team? Obviously, it was new getting used to almost an entire new coaching staff and taking in you know new elements of the playbook. And then how does that transfer into what you expect when camp opens up in early August? Well, like I say, this coaching staff was pretty simple because they, it was the same language from this jump because, like I say, the continuity and the, the knowing each other. But from the players... I saw willingness and eagerness, right? I mean, it was, they came in and they, they put the egos aside, they put the fear aside, and they put the trust <laughs> issues aside, and they just, they opened up their hearts and their minds and they gave them to us, you know? And they were, they were open and willing to just say, you know what, this is new, it's different, but we're going to attack it. And they attacked each and every day uh, with the vicious and vitality that you, that you would like to have. And they, they did it, and they grew. And, um, and I think they liked the change in terms of 
you know, some of the things that they weren't used to. Because most times you, you get guys say, well, I'm not used to that. You know? mm-hmm. I think they embraced that. They, they felt it was different. You know, uh, one of the biggest things that I laugh about every now and then is, you know, the winners get a chance to run and they look, they say, huh, we won. Why would we, <laughs> why would we run? That's, that's punishment. I say, no, punishment. Running is not punishment. Running is the gift, right? I say, you can see people who go out and jog five miles. That's a gift. That's, you should mm-hmm. look at that. And they say, ah, Coach, I don't really think I like that, but I get it. change of mentality. And they, and, they, you know, and, they, and they bought into it. So that's one of the biggest things that I loved about this team coming in, that they bought into it right away. They invested right away. Sounds good. Obviously, uh, season-wise, 11 games. I know we've talked before. 11 games in 11 weeks is something a little different than, like, the NFL, where you usually have a week off somewhere. Yeah. But obviously, we talked before how tough the GLIAC is with Grand Valley and Ferris State, but then you've also got teams that have been in the playoffs occasionally, Saginaw, Michigan Tech, Davenport last year. There's no gimmies in the GLIAC. But that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come. Um, when you look at the conference as a whole, you know, it tells a story. I mean, it really tells a story. And this is, and this story has been this, and I know I mentioned, you know, Tiffin when they were in it and the other teams, but now this is a truly tough, it's one of the best conferences in America, in all the football, Division Two football. And um, that's, like I said, and I chose to come here, and you're going to compete week in and week out. There's no give me games. There's no true quote-unquote parity. I mean, the, you come in here, you better be ready to strap it up every <laughs> single week. And once again, it's black and blue football. It's the old Norse division of football back in the day, right? You know, you talk about black and blue I division. I like the hockey reference there. <laughs> but it's, 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 it is that. That's what it is. And, um, and I love it. I mean, it's my type of football. It's my mm-hmm. style of football. And... As you know, being in this region, the really football season doesn't start until the snow starts to fall, <laughs> until it gets cold. Right? Yeah. And that's when some of the, really the season is starting to really deform and, and wrap up and see who's left. And, mm-hmm. and that's when football really starts. And, and I, this is incredible, man. Like when you, when you sit here and you talk about the great teams and uh, we're trying to be that team and be mentioned in that same breath and be in the playoffs, uh, what better way to, to go is just to say, hey, who's the best? Mm-hmm. This is the best, let's go. Sounds great. Any last words about the upcoming season? No, I mean, I just really would like to say thank you for all the support. I mean, when I came in, it was like drinking water through a fire hose. It was it was <laughs> constant. The pressure was there, but it was good. And I had the incredible support. Um, you know, even though you know, Miss Wallace now has the uh, interim tag taken off, but she was very, very helpful and um, you know, just, just always there, making sure that everything was okay in the right spot. Um, Tough love when I needed it, but at the same time, just very helpful in, in onboarding me and making sure that I knew where to be, how to be, and all those things. So she was very, very, very instrumental in the onboarding and making this transition a smooth one. And then, of course, you were there, you know, every step away. I mean, the athletic, athletic department, pardon me, has been really, really supportive. You know, so I've been really supportive. So I had nothing but a great transition, and it's been fun so far. Sounds great. Well, let's look forward to a wonderful Warrior football season this fall. Thank you. Thanks again for watching this edition of To Get to Know Your Wayne State Football Program.